Well, I'm with David Ashford, Minister for Health and Social Care. It's Tuesday, the day after Timwell Day. I have to always remember this because things move very fast. Um, obviously, at Timwell Day, there was particularly one large group of people who were very upset still because of the jabbing and the two weeks, and they don't f either want to or they can't qualify for that. Have you been thinking more about how we stand on this? Well, as I've always said, Paul, it's an interim phase. So it's not going to be around forever. We're not going to have border controls that are on vaccines. The aim, of course, is to go back to complete and utter unrestricted travel. That is, but this is another step along the way. Um, we have the science around the vaccine now that shows there is reductions in transmission, reductions in the ability for people to also contract COVID with the vaccine. So it makes sense for this interim stage to have that distinction. Now, there are people who choose not to have the vaccine, and that's personal choice. I've always supported that personal choice. Um, vaccine shouldn't, from my point of view, ever be mandatory. It should always be a personal choice for the person. But people make an informed choice around whether they want it, and they have to be aware that if they don't, then there's potential restrictions in exactly the same way mm. as some countries don't allow you access without yellow fever sure, this, vaccination. This, this is almost human rights for some people, isn't it? I mean, you can see somewhere down the, the road some sort of litigation or... Well, well no, like, like, I, like I say, we're not alone in the world. There's, no. The UK, in fact, this morning has announced that they'll be doing similar measures around vaccination um, going forward. Yellow fever countries actually don't allow you entry, certain countries, if you've been in certain jurisdictions without having had a yellow fever vaccination. So this isn't something new. But the thing I need to stress is, like I say, it's an interim stage. This isn't the settled border position that's going to be there forevermore. It's one more step along the way. And we need to get back eventually to unrestricted travel where vaccination status doesn't matter. Any idea of a timetable then? Well, we don't, you know me, I don't put timetables on things, particularly as we found over the last 15 months, things can move quite fast. So it's important that we do it in a staged, managed approach. This um, year? Well, I, I would hope we would start seeing some movement this year. Um, certainly this isn't, I don't believe, the settled position for the rest of the year now. Mm. I would hope we'd be able to take further steps forward to free it up. Now... Many people will be about on this one about getting off the island and going anywhere else, but I, I want to deal with that part of the travel agency bit in a moment. But you promised me, I'm pretty sure you said that uh, app would be available come come of the day that the borders open. It ain't. And it's, uh, last no, I checked um, it an NH, hour ago, it's still not. NHS Digital, as I said in that interview, was doing work for Wales. Wales. That they, work they're got, live. That, way, that work got postponed. It is now finished. They've been live for a week or two, and I think now, isn't it? Yeah, but they had technical issues. There oh. were technical issues with that piece of work that went on a bit longer. Um, everything is completed. Everything, I know, I did say hope. <laughs> okay. We are hoping that That's it right, was, I thought uh, it sounded more like if a, you went, it will be. But you know, no, okay. If you go back and loop. I'm sure you're but, right. Um, but in terms, of, um, in terms of it, we are are hoping that it will be live as quickly as possible. We are next on their work list, so we are their next piece of work, and we've got to get it live as quickly as possible. But we are in the UK's hands. Mm. It is their app. Um, we're an independent country. They're under no obligation to even allow us to form part of that app. The UK has kindly agreed that we can be. Um, I believe Jersey and Guernsey have their own issues in this regard. Um, but we have had it agreed that we can form part of you the app. You can press on them or is we, it not that sort of thing? Yes, you just have we, to wait. No, we have been in contact with them again today. Um, to actually try and find out where it's right. up to. But we are ultimately in NHS Digital's hands because it's not our app um, and it's them that have to set us to live. So talking to a business person today who needs to go to Spain, I think it is, and they, they've been onto 111 to double check what can go on because you're told not to ring your surgeries, I know that much. Uh, they said it could be four weeks, and that's just them reading off a piece of paper. So, it, you know, it, are we talking that sort of time? At well, no, I don't know where that four weeks well, they, has they, come they, from. That's what I just um, goes on. Because I mean, certainly that's certainly not come from the you, department you, here. You'd hope less than um, four weeks. Yes, most definitely. What can they do in the meantime, though, if they have to travel for well, business? This is, How well, do they get Well, this back? is where we have a problem, because we can provide a vac copy of the vaccine record. Who does that? But countries oh. aren't accepting it because what they want is a digital QR code or they actually want the barcoded security letters that the UK produce mm -hmm. and we can't access those until the data is live on the app. So how do they do it? Well, they, they're at the moment, there they is can't. nothing that countries will accept and all the Crown dependencies So they can't in get the into those countries? or no, that's They a... can probably with testing, I believe, right. in certain countries. It depends upon the country, Paul. Yeah. Each country has a different entry criteria. It's a nightmare for some people. Um, but it's the same position for all the Crown dependencies as well. And we... we touched on this um, with my travel agent guy the other day about you not following the, the traffic light system of the UK and I actually got I mean I said I contacted you because I, I thought I must have that wrong because I assumed we just were going to go down that route it seems the obvious thing to do you did say no we're not and at the minute 
there is no indication of exactly when. I know you were hoping, maybe, maybe you can flush this one out for me and explain what you can and can't yeah, do. So this, this is another step along the way, as I say. So at the moment, travel for the vaccination status is restricted to the common travel area. So it's got to be two plus two and you've got to have had your vaccine administered in the common travel area. In terms of entry to the island in general, um, obviously you've got to meet the criteria around family and everything else that's in place for the testing. Mm -hmm. If you're coming from within the common travel area, then it's a day one test and then you are released from isolation after a negative result. If in the previous 10 days you've been outside the common travel area, then it's seven days isolation with a test on day one and a test on day okay. six. Why not just follow? I know we've got this extra hurdle, but... In general, would it make no sense just to follow the United Kingdom? Well, we have seen with, well, we have seen with traffic lights that will probably be a position potentially considered going forward. But one of the things we've seen with traffic light systems is they change very quickly. Mm -hmm. Portugal is a prime example of that, mm -hmm. where a lot of people were caught very off guard with the football. They were out for Portugal, um, and then suddenly they'd be all rushing back mm -hmm. because the UK has changed the status. But also, one of the other problems you find with traffic light systems is you're very reliant on people not going into a green country then crossing over into an amber country mm -hmm. because the UK themselves have said they have seen cases of that where people are going into green countries to try and access them once they're there in Europe, a country that's on the red or amber list, and then coming back via the green country to avoid isolation. So, so traffic light systems aren't quite as secure as they appear. So it will but form. We have uncertainty. So it will form part mm. of our system going forward. But I, I wouldn't say there is uncertainty because the certainty is very clear. If you're from within the common travel area, it is a day one test um, and then released from isolation. And if you're coming from outside the common travel area in the previous ten days, yeah, it's a seven day isolation mm -hmm. with two tests. But Guernsey today have just moved us up. They've ramped us up one position, and they're about to potentially ramp us up another position now that doesn't mean common travel to me if, if jersey is going to treat the other man as a high risk than it has been you, you've seen that yeah, but every country has different systems yeah but um, you, we you treat the we, common they, travel well, area they seem as that, just they're that. Worried about with us then well they everyone has different systems so i assume in guernsey they're still basing their system around case numbers mm. um, because that's what we've seen an increase in um different countries have different systems 200 and, what 20 odd countries in the world all with unique systems. We use ours based on the common travel area, which is the Channel Islands, the United Kingdom, and Republic of Ireland. So, so travel agents, will you have to give them some sort of financial support or something? Because I mean, they're the only people now that presumably can't do business at the minute. Well, no, they, they can still do business, and the isolation criteria is much reduced from where it was. Yeah. Let's not forget it was a strict 14 day isolation with test regardless of vaccination status before this, um, in relation to those who are two plus two, if they've been outside the common travel area, then they do have to do the test upon arrival. Let's deal with people who get tracked and traced because somebody, like school particularly, I know some people who now the parents are off, the child's off, they've got to go into this whole thing. Now, obviously the parents are double jabbed and two weeks. It doesn't make sense, does it, that they have to be well, they're not. They're not, um, exactly. Unless, the, you know, when the, if you are 2 plus 2 vaccinated, you are not isolated. Not at all? You or? have to prove to 111 that you've been the two weeks um, vaccinated above, above your second dose and you will not be isolated. And no test required then? And no that. testing required. So those. what happens then? They, they get a unless, ping, do they? Unless, of course, they start showing symptoms. Yeah. So someone at school... Now there's no class going home or anything like that? Is no, that right? it's done on an individual case basis. But they announce um, it and they tell the parents and everyone that, who knew that person has to be, have a... Well, no, no, high, high proof. Con it's, it, the system hasn't changed. Right. So it's high risk. Sorry, contact. I just trying to get it. Cause it's, so, yeah, you so it's, it. the system has not changed whatsoever in relation to high risk and close contacts. The only physical change is around those who are 2 plus 2 vaccinated yeah. who no longer have the isolation requirement. Uh, all the rest of it is still uh, exactly the same. So if you are contacted as a high risk contact of the individual, you will be advised to isolate for 10 days. That will then involve the two tests. Mm -hmm. um, if you um, if you don't accept the testing, then obviously it's 21 days isolation, which again has not changed. But if you show to 111 that you're 2 plus 2 vaccinated, there isn't a requirement for you to isolate. And you show that how exactly? The minute. How do you show that you have had all this thing? They have it on the records? Well, we, have, or you, we have your records. It's as simple as that. So they we can have, see it. Yeah, and, we can, and, you can, and people can produce their vaccination card as well. Oh, yeah. But the other key point to make, mine. but the <laughs> other key point to make as well yeah. is that in relation, um, in relation to those that are high risk contacts the person who is now isolated is the high risk contact themselves right i'll go find mine 
Yeah, here is because there's this thing about the, the, the batch numbers and the Indian thing, isn't there? Yes. <coughs> Got it here somewhere. Well, you keep talking. What? What? Oh, there it is. So, what are we up to? Um, okay, so I haven't got any zeros at the end, which is a bit zero ones, zero zero one, or zero 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 one. Three batches right, from right. the Serum Institute in India. That's what everyone needs to do then. They need to check it, and then they worry if they into no, this batch well, or not. It, no, it's it's being resolved. It's a technical issue. There was nothing wrong with those vaccine batches. Right. I need to be absolutely categorical on this. It's the way that the European Medical Agency issue um, their licences. The EU has based its COVID passport regime around saying that, it, that the, those who can enter the EU have to have had EMA licensed vaccines. The way the EMA license is they license by the producer and the country that's coming from. So the UK version of AstraZeneca holds a current license. The EU version does but the Indian version does, currently doesn't, mm. and the EU hasn't been importing anything from India to it. So that has left a, a technical issue and a gap where technically those who actually have had the Indian um, version of AstraZeneca actually can't enter under the COVID vaccine um, restrictions um, passport scheme. The UK has contacted the EU and has been in, uh, with them, provided everything to the EMA to get this resolved. But I do need to stress again, because there's been lots of rumours flying around. That's what there's we're here nothing for. Physically, we there's nothing physically wrong with that vaccine. It is exactly the same as the AstraZeneca produced in the UK, the AstraZeneca produced elsewhere. Mm -hmm. It is purely down to a technical issue around how the EMA actually register vaccines. I was with somebody the other day and they literally looked at their card and it came up and they did feel a bit like, oh, there's going to be problems ahead. And at the minute you can't travel anywhere, <laughs> basically. But when will it be resolved then? I mean, and will it be a blanket resolved? I mean, or will America treat you differently to the EU? No, no, EU? no. It's literally down to, like I say, it's a technical issue with the way that the EU has designed their COVID passport scheme. Yeah. Um, in, lay, in relation to vaccination and the fact they have linked it to EMA licences. Um, so basically the UK has been in talks with the EU and they're hoping to have it resolved shortly. This is like a sausage dispute or something with Northern Ireland, by sounds of it. It's, it's, is it a bit of it, it's a brinkmanship going well, on there, Well, no, that? it's not brinkmanship. I mean, to be fair to both parties, I think it's something that hadn't been considered. Right. Um, it's now come up as an issue and both parties are looking to resolve it. Um, talking about rumours, I'm pretty well undated with people telling me there's lots of COVID out there. We know there's, you've already mentioned that, but there's is it pressure already in, in hospitals, people on life support or, or ventilators. I don't want to overdo it. Um, is there? No. Will you tell us? Absolute um, nonsense. Right. Um, good dispute that straight away. Yeah. I can actually say as of the time of us doing this interview today, there is not one COVID patient in hospital. Right. It is zero. How many in the community at the moment? So in the community, um, as of the last update, I think it was 43 cases. And does it exactly nail down what that means? The, the, those people well, it does. If people, go, if, people go on, if people go on to the snapshot, which is available on the covid19.gov.im, it gives them the breakdown of what's come from travel, what's mm. locally acquired known source, what's locally acquired unknown source. So people on a daily basis, and the previous snapshots are there, so people can actually see where the origin is. Another one to deal with, a guy came over on the boat, got through somehow, spent the night in a nightclub, and got on the boat the next day to go back, and he was positive or something, and whatever. These these fly everywhere. Well, I've got to say, I've not, not heard, heard that, that one, one at okay, all. So and, you know, with the border restrictions we have in place, I uh, would have like? expected that one would have been flagged to me. I mean, on, on Sunday you got rid of, down at the airport, that's gone as fin and finished and is being sent back. That that was about £100,000 worth of work, wasn't it, on that one? Does that include when you spent it getting rid of it, by the way? <laughs> was that all in the same money you spent to Well, that would be up down? to DOI, what, do, what they do with it afterwards. Okay. Um, but it was all budgeted for... But 250000 is in, in the old Iceland yeah. slash shop right, isn't it? Yeah, um, but, when, but when you actually look at the amount of vaccines that have been provided and the speed with which that vaccine rollout has commenced, without the hubs, we would not have been able to do it at this mm. speed. Um, the staff at both hubs have been absolutely phenomenal. I went down to the airport hub to say thank you to all the staff on Sunday, on the last day, um, and it was an emotional time for them all because they've been like, you know, they've mm. been like family down there. They've they've really had a kind of personal connection to one another, and the work they've done has been absolutely fabulous. The, the th throughput, Paul. I mean, mm. you're double jabbed yourself. Um, the second one, so, it was you know, like the way so they are they're able to get yeah. the flow through both of those hubs yeah. is absolutely astounding, and the long hours and work and dedication that those people have put in we should forever more be grateful for so the, the one in uh, to, uh, shop right where you want to call that old building as it was Iceland that's staying 
Yeah, is until it? September, till the end of this programme. And then if the booster programme is starting at that point, we would need to decide how the booster programme is best delivered. There may be other models for the booster mm. programme because it's dependent on what type of vaccine is it, how mobile is the vaccine, what's the security protocols, what's the disposal protocols around it. Because one of the amazing things that the staff have done with the airport hubs is they've made it look so seamless. And the way I described it to someone the other day was it's a bit like a swan. It looks very graceful on top, mm. but there's an awful lot of paddling going on underneath to make sure it works. Around the vaccine as it stands, there's, there's dozens of protocols, even down to how the cardboard boxes they come in are disposed of, how the vials are disposed of. All of that has to be complied with that we, the general public going through the centre, don't see. Mm. We just get the needle in the yeah. arm and out again. But there's a huge process behind that that the staff have to legally comply with.